The biggest stone ever moved was uh, the Thunder Stone. It was moved by Catherine the Great's people. Late at, 1700s. Late 1700s. They um, used a big team of people, and they moved this thing at, not very far, like 10 miles, 8 miles, something like that. Nine miles? And, and it, it took was not, over ocean. And it took nine months. And when they were pulling this thing on the ground, they had to consistently try metallurgy different types of ball bearings for it to roll on because the ones they were moving would keep cr being crushed and then they had to use screw jacks that are just like you jack up a house floor with like a sub floor mm -hmm. they would use these screw jacks to lift the statue back up and put it on bearings well the romans didn't have a screw jack the dj yeah. we had uh, metallurgy with trying different kinds of ball bearing that's something way outside i mean the 1700s the 1700s we're talking right at the cusp of them actually making structural steel you know this is the beginning of iron bridges they were actually making good metallurgy then and it still took trial and error to move this stone and it's that stone's basically the same size as the ones at Baalbek, a tiny bit bigger but the same kind of issues where they would have had to have jacked that thing up they would have had to which would have took steel or hard hard metal they basically they had to have some highly advanced metallurgy for the time not as good as we have now but 1700s level of metallurgy. That's and, what it would have taken. And the Romans did not have that level not even of sophistication. So that's the thing. So there's something that you informed me of, Dan, is that the invention of the screw jack was utilized in order to lift that thunderstone, the bronze horseman, on top of that those metal rails. So the Romans didn't have that. That wasn't invented until thousands of years later. So without that screw jack, they would have never been able to lift it in the first place. That stone would have just sat there.